We have been fortunate to have uh, someone that is looking to help shape Everton Park and have some really good ideas of what the future may hold for us. Simon and Oliver here from Rogers, Rogers Corp. So Roger, Rogers Corp is a property developer with several projects around our local area. They've just started, they've just finished one in uh, Bridgman Downs and their next project that they're looking at doing is in Everton Park on the vacant land which is next to Woolworths and across the road from the old master's site. So I'll pass it over to Oliver and Simon and uh, just tell us what you got planned and how you thought um, Everton Park is just a great way to, great place to invest. Thank you uh, Madeline, uh, uh, Jeff and Justin for having us along tonight. Uh, excellent event and great turnout. Uh, your community support and uh, everything you do for the community is obviously well and truly appreciated by the turnout we have here. Uh, so the development that we've uh, got underway on the vacant land next to Woolworths, uh, it's a five-stage urban village. Getting asked to bring it closer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a five-stage urban village, so uh, you might have seen some press in the uh, local local paper and uh, council advertising and things like that recently. Uh, the development uh, consists of five stages, so we have a medical and child care facility on the corner, um, followed by four residential buildings at the back with some ground floor retail, uh, so communal public open space and some grass lawns and things like that to create a bit of a vibe and a uh, hub for the community. Uh, we identified the area as a hot spot for us uh, just because of its close proximity to CBD. Uh, it's easy, easy travel access and via the tunnel. Um, and just the vibe of Everton Park, we sort of felt five years ago it was sort of a bit underdone. Um, we started doing a few developments, some townhouses, Everton Park, uh, Bridgman Downs, another site in Bracken Ridge, and then while we were out here we sort of thought to ourselves, we were sort of struggling to find some, like that sort of destination of where we could, you know, meet someone for breakfast or have a coffee and different things like that. So we sort of thought, and when you look on the map, you see some, like, um, different hubs around the place and there's sort of there was sort of a gap where Everton Park was so the site was uh, really appealing for us and yeah and hence just locking the site down and getting underway so at the moment uh, council advertising and uh, council submission process has finished uh, last week I think it was and yeah we expect to hopefully have the DA in um, another yeah, eight to ten weeks uh, we'll be getting underway on the site in another few weeks. Just we're doing the uh, one into five staging, uh, so you might see a few excavators and things like that. But uh, proper activity will start uh, the first quarter of next year. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions or anything like that, and feel free to ask us or come. What is the first stage? Uh, the first stage is uh, ground floor uh, medical pharmacy uh, with a 112 place childcare centre above. So Harmony is the uh, provider. Why did you choose Everton Park in particular? I, I, I heard that you went in and out and in and out, but why Everton Park? So we, uh, we do a fair bit of research, obviously, before we commit to a project and a location. Um, we dipped our toes in Everton Park with our first development on Old Northern Road, uh, to some townhouses three years ago. Uh, they sold instantly off the plan and then uh, by the time they settled, like everyone sort of, you know, the price gain on their property from buying it off the plan, they sort of made about 50000 or so. So just that instant growth uh, was really appealing to us. Um, as we said, it's like direct tunnel access into the CBD. Uh, it's still, yeah, it was sort of lacking like a central hub, we felt. And um, yeah, so a few of those sort of reasons. Yeah, we sort of operate in the northern corridor here, and yeah, that's just just seems like it's got a great great five to ten years ahead. So, yeah. 
Simon, can I ask you a question? When we met, I was really, really excited about the retail precinct. We're starting off with the medical um, uh, precinct at stage one, and then we have obviously the residential, and um, you described to me that the, that the style of units you're doing is actually larger than the standard units. So if you could elaborate on that a bit. But the thing that really got my, um, my heart pumping was the um, retail and food precinct that you're um, going to design in that area there, when you talked about a bit. Um, so Simon touched on it a little bit earlier. There are a few other precincts in and around inner Brisbane, um, South City Square, Cooper Square, Emporium around James Street. Um, these are all examples of where we sort of drew our inspiration. So to answer your question, Madeline, for, for us, in Everton Park, it's quite evident that there is a, a gap in the market in terms of the retail offering. You see a lot of smaller franchise businesses, but um, we sort of felt that um, this particular site, given the ample car parking, the existing retail centre, and the fact that we kind of had a blank canvas, we could really deliver a mix of apartments or residential that was complemented by a higher end retail provision, so restaurants and bars, things that are a little bit more family orientated um, for the area, and I think it would you know, drive that residential use. Now, for us too, we understand um, there is a little bit of resistance to apartments in the suburbs, which is understandable. So for us, when we looked at uh, the examples of apartments in the inner city, we felt that um, a lot of those examples were quite small. So for us, uh, our building design, if you do have a look at the plans, generally speaking, our units are about 15 to 20% bigger than what you'll find um, in the inner city. So for example, a, a two bed, two bath unit in the inner city might be say 70 square meters internally, where it's sort of 85 to 95 square meters. So we're really trying to replicate what we would call a affordable uh, but functional living space, albeit under um, the median house price. And that's kind of the driver for us. And the, the retail precinct that you are hoping to accomplish there, what, it, what type of businesses are you going to attract to that area? Are you looking more to like little franchises or do you want to make it more like a restaurant type of precinct or something like that? Yeah, so our, vi our vision at the moment is to uh, more have a, a retail and dining precinct. Um, you know, we, we'd love like a microbrewery there or, you know, something, something that's sort of fun and make it a little bit hip. So uh, someone actually reached out and wanted a gourmet fish and chip shop there, one of the local residents. So, yeah, there's a few things like that. Uh, so, guys, we're going to open the floor to probably about maybe five or so minutes of questions. Does anyone have any questions regarding the, um, the new development of Everton Park and how it may affect um, our, our way of living. So one question I do have actually is, is there going to be ample parking? Because obviously Everton Park is, the parking at the moment is quite difficult and you're talking about bringing so, so much more retail, residential, and obviously residential will have parking, but will there be um, retail parking incorporated into the new design? So uh, with the design we've engaged, they are well, one of the best traffic engineers around. Um, they've been commenting all along of traffic spaces we're re uh, required to provide. In our DA, uh, there is yeah the traffic. We are providing more car, like car spaces than we, we could get away with. Um, and we've actually just made the design so car parking is more segregated on the site. So retail, I think there's a good 50, 50 or so car spaces which are designated purely on, on ground to uh, the retail. Uh, stage one, the medical, that's got two levels of underground parking. Uh, and then the residents and the visitors are all sort of segregated in their own, in, you know, their own ramps, sort of going down into the basement. So the traffic is, the parking is, uh, yeah, it is conveniently located and yeah, designated to... It's thought of it, like thought of it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we often think you, you go to a place and sometimes you drive in, you're not sure, yeah. you know, residents, visitors, parking, retail parking around here, retail over there, not sure where to park, so we have tried to uh, isolate it, make it as easy and functional as possible. Can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about traffic and how that might be directed around that precinct area? Um, there has been a few um, discussions with council about the traffic. 
Uh, in terms of the direction, nothing's really going to change that way because we're providing ample car parking. We won't be forcing on street parking or um, worsening the roads around us. Um, there have been um, some conversations about the intersection, obviously, and that is of concern for everyone. Um, right now, we know that the intersection is going to be upgraded in a form over the next few years. Um, the thing for us is that, um, and this is something Madeline and I were talking about yesterday, is that as part of our project, um, some may not actually know, but we'll be contributing um, a, a fairly significant amount of money to the community via the council. Um, so it's really important that you as a community make it clear to the council that you'd love to see where that money is, um, I, su I suppose, spent. And things like road infrastructure upgrades obviously are pretty topical. So I, I would encourage you as a community to drive that. One of the things that I'm really passionate about, and um, Robin Baker's here, the, she's, she's on our team, is that we're really passionate about the... We have a lot of development happening in our neighbourhood at the moment and there's a lot, a lot of money that the developers pay council. And I'm talking millions and millions and millions of dollars. We as a community need to make council accountable because that money at the moment goes into a black hole and there's no transparency around it. So I'd like to call on the community, on us, to make the council accountable for where that money goes. That money is being paid to council by developments in Everton Park, by developments in our region, so it should be spent here. We need that money to stay in our community, not go into a black hole and never come back. So I'll probably be sending lots of emails out around because this is something that I'm really, really passionate about. Um, and at the moment, we're not getting any answers from anywhere. Um, uh, so it's something that we need to really push because the money just disappears. And it's not misappropriated, I'm not saying that, but it should stay here in our neighbourhood. It's our money. It should be here to make our lives better. So I'd like to round of applause for Simon and Oliver. And guys, we look forward to what you bring to Everton Park. Thank you. Okay.